Welcome back to another OMAP tutorial. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to quickly and easily uh, sample software instruments. Now, there are a number of ways that you can obviously go about doing this. Uh, what I wanted to do is just kind of share one of my personal uh, workflows uh, that helps me keep all of this very streamlined and, and simple. Um, this has actually come up in questions uh, at least two times this week in two different circle of friends. So. Um, uh, I just wanted to bring this up here um, in the off chance that it will help some of you. Um, now, I'm not talking about how to manage, say, take folders or, you know, manage a whole bunch of different comps, like, like how are you capturing different arrangements, but um, more likely this is going to help you in the scenarios where um, you're dealing with actually dialing in a sound specifically. So it's a bit more on the sound design side of the spectrum. Um, but more than anything, um, more than, than designing a new sh sound, it may be as simple as um, finding the perfect delivery or shape um, or timbre of a sound, okay? Uh, and this is very easy um, for it to get away from you, okay? And we've all been there. You load up a synth, uh, you play a little riff, you think it's catchy, uh, something isn't quite perfect, so you twist a couple of knobs and you move a couple of sliders, and then you realize, you know what, it was better before, and you can't find your way back. <laughs> no matter how long you spend on this darn sound, you cannot find your way back to that perfect spot. So here's one way uh, to help you avoid that pitfall in the future, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do is just load up a, a, a simple like stock synth here. Let's grab, uh, let's grab sculpture. We never look at sculpture in these tutorials. Um, and let's just grab a very short kind of, maybe like a percussive sound or a pluck or something. That's probably a best, let's see. Something that's very uh, short would be preferable. That's actually pretty long. Okay, that's pretty good. We're gonna bring this down a bit in its duration. Okay, it uh, doesn't need to be perfect. This is a good uh, example sound. So um, here's, here's the basic workflow. All you're going to do is set the audio to flow from the synth into um, an audio track that you keep armed and ready for recording. It's as simple as that. It's a very, um, it's kind of an elegant solution for kind of a, a, what can be a messy problem. So uh, here's how you do it. You uh, set your stereo out to a bus. Okay. Now we're just going to open up a new audio track. Now you can actually set up the input from here in Logic and, and in other DAWs it actually gives you the option of, of doing the same thing. And I guess we can just run through this twice so you can see both places where this lives. Uh, so uh, first one here, you set your input to that same bus that you just bust your synth out to, okay? And make sure that your output is uh, to output one and two or stereo or whatever you have your track originally set to, okay? Now, as long as this is armed, uh, you're going to get audio out, okay, of your synth. Uh, make sure that you have your synth track selected when you're trying to play notes. Okay, uh, now you're gonna notice that right now you hear sound. And that's actually not a good thing. So let's open up our mixer and we're going to delete the auxiliary track that was automatically created by your DAW. Um, if that happened, um, you're not gonna hurt anything by deleting this, the bus still exists, okay? This is just simply getting rid of the auxiliary track that was created. Logic happens to create those for you automatically, okay? Uh, so now if we play a, a note here, you can see that there's something happening but there's no audio coming out. And that's because we need to arm our audio track, okay? We need to monitor the audio flowing through it. The other thing we need to do is arm it for recording, okay? And, and that way, when we actually do hit record, uh, we're going to record, okay? And that's important. Even if we are uh, working on a different track, it'll still capture on this track. Uh, the other thing I personally like to do is get rid of the countdown and the metronome. Um, that way it's not just always there. It's kind of maddening. Um, and the last thing you want is to wait four seconds uh, to capture the perfect sound, um, especially if it's fleeting. So uh, here's how it's set up. We've got our, our sound routed from our synth to our audio channel. 
everything is armed and ready to go. So I'm just going to play a few notes here and record it. Okay, um, so there's one. And now this is where it actually starts to really show off its power, okay? We're now going to set up a recording and we're just gonna start messing with the material in here, okay? We're not gonna mess with any other parameters, but this is quickly gonna open your eyes to exactly how powerful this very simple solution can be for you. So uh, we're gonna hit record. Okay, so we just, uh, or I guess we can just kind of imagine that we just uh, ran through a whole bunch of different variations of this same exact sound. Um, now, why is this method so preferable for me? Well, let me show you. It's quick to uh, delete all of the unnecessary MIDI that you don't need. Um, you can disclose your toolbar, uh, if need be, again, depending upon your, your DAW, and just simply select uh, all of your, your audio uh, recordings that you just took and you can use the strip silence tool, okay? Now, we may actually need to change some of these parameters to um, make them sound a bit better, but here we go. We'll just strip all the silence out of those and out of these as well. And there we go. Now we have all of these individual samples and we can just pick and choose which ones we like best. So here they are. Okay, I think you probably get the idea. Um, again, it's just as simple as routing it um, from the synth directly into the audio track. And let's set up another audio track really quick, just so you can see um, how to do it without setting up the bus here as the input, okay? So we'll just, this is how it is normally. So you set up, you go ahead and you accept your new audio track. And um, if you're gonna do this manually, you just come down here uh, to input one and you select your bus. Okay, that's just that simple. So uh, make sure that your audio is set, or audio, your, sorry, your software instrument is set to uh, bus one for an output and bus one then becomes the input for your audio track and that's it. Uh, always monitor your track so you can hear the audio coming out and make sure that you arm your track for recording um, so you don't miss out on whatever you just captured. As a, as a quick fail safe, um, this is another cool uh, thing about using this particular workflow. Get back up here. I'm going to unarm my track here and I'm just going to hit record. And I'm playing, 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 playing. And then I realize, shoot, I never armed my audio track for recording. Fear not, your MIDI is still here. Move your playhead back here, arm it for recording, and go. Okay, and that's all you need to do. It's just gonna play back that, that MIDI information and it's gonna translate it to recorded audio for you. So it's a very simple yet um, somewhat elegant solution uh, to a problem that can quickly get out of hand. Um, so we hope that this uh, helped you. Um, maybe it's a brand new idea for some of you guys. And if so, I hope it helps. Um, maybe you can even put it to use in your very next project. As always, we really appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks again for all the support. Um, leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought of this one, and let us know what you want to see next, because we work off of requests. Thanks again, folks. We will see you again next time. Cheers.